Hey guys, welcome to the Pitmaster Secrets Podcast. I got yet one more interview with Johnny Burkett here. You ready for this one? Here we go. So uh, we're going to dive deep into the art, into the heart and soul of your Pitmaster <laughs> journey here. You ready? Ready. Let's go. Okay. So uh, back in the good old days, how has becoming a Pitmaster changed your life? Well, like from the off, beginning, like Johnny pre Pitmaster. Johnny now Pitmaster. We prefer Pit Hustle. Pit Hustle. Pit Hustler. Pit Hustler. Okay. And the only reason I say that is because <laughs> when we started out, you heard the term Pitmaster. Yeah. And uh, we cooked on pellet smokers when we were starting out. And everybody would say, you know, social media keyboard cooks would be. Keyboard cooks. <laughs> keyboard cooks. You're not a real Pitmaster. I never pit heard master. that would keyboard cooks. So we heard that a lot. You're not a real Pitmaster because you cook on a pellet smoker. Well, let me tell you, 10 years ago, pellet smokers were uh, something of the future, I guess yeah, you could yeah. say, because today, everybody's got one in their backyard and they're using it. Well, I got two. Yep. But nobody yeah. used them because it was $2,000 back then. Mm-hmm. So you I know. built them, though. Yeah. That's the difference. You know, I built mine. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, though. But, you know, back in the day, they were $2,000, so, you know, now everybody had one sitting around, so they yeah. just couldn't cook them, and they wasn't very... Uh, easy to get like you can go down to the old big box store and pick you up yeah they used to be heavy they used to be uh, a lot more money yeah a lot more money so you know we kind of prefer the term pit hustler there you go (laughs) (laughs) because everybody can be a pit hustler yeah but uh going back to when everything started how has barbecue changed my life uh it's been good and it's been bad so Wow. Wherever you want to take from it. It's been life-changing. Give me one of the most significant ups. Man, I don't... The ups and downs the same day? Uh, going oh, on the bar- same day. Going on Barbecue Pit Masters was the highlight and the downfall <laughs> of everything. So Hey, you'll actually see it. me on that episode back there. I'm, I'm all photobombing like crazy yep. back there. It was a highlight. Me and Forrester. <laughs> and the downfall of everything. So, you know, it always comes back to it. So that's pretty much where everything starts and where everything uh, begins and ends all in one one take there. But, you know, going back to the very beginning, not knowing anything to knowing stuff now, uh, the world of barbecue's changed in itself. Mm-hmm. But. Yeah, you know, for the, uh, the barbecue journey, I got to say, that's that's for a lot of pit masters, not just you guys, not just the, the you know, Lulu's to pit hustler, right. not just that journey, but there's a lot of people that, uh, you know, it, back in the good old days when we were there and barbecue pit masters started and, and uh, you know, we helped a lot of guys out with their pits or whatever that they had to do. And, and uh, you guys were the ones we, we spent the most time on and other shows too but it seems like that 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 nascar like we're going to be nascar barbecue like the how the industry blew up it seems like it chewed up and spit out a lot of people yes. that is this industry has man because like you can remember back in the day going and just hanging out at a contest and you know everybody's friends and all this stuff and then it got industrialized you know and now it's it's all like competitive, and we were actually going to try to spend some time on this topic at some point about how social media has just changed barbecue as a as a sport and just turned everybody into these influencers, right? Exactly. And it's and it and it basically the the influencer game has has uh, almost you know I mean it's it's okay we all want to make money and all that stuff and with our with our passion, but it's almost like. It's it's all I don't even know what to call it, but it's almost it well commercialized is the easy way and probably the most politically correct way to say it. Commercialized our passion a little bit, and uh, you know I, I can remember a lot of the, a lot of our buddies that you know made it on pitmasters and stuff like that. And anyway, you know that's what's uh, caused the sport to grow, though. Yes, very that's, much. That's so. what put it in everybody's living room, and so I'm kind of grateful for it. I am too. You know, uh, it's been great. You know, through the time frame, a lot of people don't understand how everything started with us. You know, there's still a lot that went into uh, going into this. Uh, people don't know. People lost their jobs. People don't understand that there was incomes and it was the only way to survive or the only way to live. And that was generational businesses. They don't. That they were don't restaurants. They don't that understand were that. Yeah. You know? That that these guys got you know 
promised a big thing, and they come out there and they get on pitmasters, you know, and then they got dramatized. <laughs> but it also created a lot of people too. Yeah, created a lot of people. Yeah. Look at uh, Meat Church down there. It created yeah. him. You know, yeah. it created. I mean, a lot of people. If you look at those people that was on that show, are people of today that you are seeing. Because it takes about five years to transition into into something or different things or however you want to brand yourself or move or, you know, just yeah. like social media, you're talking about that being an influencer. Pictures change everything. Yeah. Uh, we learned that early on is media is king. Yeah. If you want to sell something, is king. content That's right. is king. Uh, a lot of people can't, t- there's, a, there's like we sell on Pitmasters, there was a lot of better cooks than we was. A lot. Yeah. But they didn't have the personality that we had. Yep. And they didn't have the uh, the ump to go for it and do what we needed to do. And that's what we did. We was us. Yep. And that's where a pit hustler comes in, not a pit master. Yep. Because a pit master is somebody that's rounded around the edges. We're not. We're a little edgy. We're a little different. We're going to do things a little different. And that's just how we are. Uh, that's how a lot of people are. And that's how we're going to accept you no matter real. what. Yep. You're going to be real. Yeah. Yeah. I love it, dude. What kind of cooker do you use currently and why? No pressure, Johnny. No pressure. <laughs> well, currently, uh, let's see. You got well, several. Yeah, we've got several cookers. We still have pellet smokers. Yeah. Uh, we've cooked on cabinet smokers. We've cooked on water smokers. Do you still have the big Traeger? We still have the big Traeger. Traeger 200. We've got some offset smokers. Uh, right now, what we, we started out in pit hustle. We never cooked on cans before. So, if you don't know what that is, UDS, can smoker, that's yeah. what, basically what we're cooking on now. Mm-hmm. So, we built two, or three, I'm sorry, we built three. Uh, cooked started, on them last year. Started cooking on them last year. Learned that we needed something a little different and something a little bit more efficient to mm-hmm. get the job done. So, yeah. uh, we contacted Frank. <laughs> and uh, he and built we went the, hot and fast. Went hot and fast and built the Pit Hustle 2.0 yeah. to put us back on the mark of where we wanted to be on yeah. the heat. Do you think it's the hottest and fastest drum smoker in uh, competition barbecue? Is that too broad of too bold of a term? I don't know if it's the hottest. You just take the lid off. I think you can do whatever. Yeah, (laughs) you can burn one down in seconds. Uh, Maintaining our biggest thing when we built ours, we was running two. I think one and a half inch, like little bitty short pipes or Mm -hmm. homemade. You know, from the hardware store. You know, we was like, hey, we're gonna make them. And uh, I think Frank always says you need to build one to learn what you need. So yep, absolutely. That's man. what we did. We built one. We cooked on it. Yeah, no baffle systems, no plates, no nothing. Just great and a, a charcoal basket in the bottom, and that's how we cooked. But we wasn't getting the air circulation, and we wasn't getting the uh, the air intake we needed to maintain a good steady heat source. Uh, it cost us several times at contests, and we knew it. Mm-hmm. So that's why we went with the three inch design. To give us something that was more power, just kind of like Tim Allen, it's kind of like, <laughs> you, know, you want something with more power. Yeah, more power. I wanted to be able to take that smoker up to 350 if I was behind and just rock it. If I yeah. wanted to come down, I wanted to come down. If I want to cook it at 450, if I want to turn it into a steak cooker at the, the day before and cook an SCA, I can cook a steak on it. If I want yeah. to, whatever I want to do, I want to be able to do it with one smoker and I don't want to tote around three or four different smokers. Yeah. Not that there's anything wrong with anybody that has a bunch of smokers out there. <laughs> You know, well, the, that's the whole point with competition barbecue is you need to run light and lean. Yes, if you can, because you got all that stuff you got to load up and clean up. Well, that's what we was talking about earlier. The transport is that we're not cooking in a trailer system no more. Yeah. Even though we've got the big red sled, twenty four foot, got the deck on the back. You can of mount it. them things to the trailer if you wanted to. If we wanted to, yeah. But then we're still back into the same area of what everybody else is, and we won't be pit hustlers. Yeah. We want you, you want to come to be see what's going on, approachable, exactly. We're taking a pickup truck. We built a... Uh, the man van sometimes. Yeah, the man van. Well, the van van has been retired. <laughs> oh, has it really has been retired. I'll tell you what. <laughs> but uh, uh, we built a, a, basically a hauler that goes into your hitch yeah. to carry our drums. Yeah. And then it, everything else goes into the bed of the truck. Mm-hmm. So we're moving fast and we're moving easy. So we've got everything basically condensed down to what we need and what we're going to take. Mm-hmm. You know, a long time ago, like I was talking about, we used to cook off the seat of our pants. It was you took everything you had. Mm-hmm. That's a different topic for a different day, <laughs> for different stories. But you get there, and the biggest concept with going to contests and cooking is you got too much crap. 
Yeah. And when you get there, you start second guessing everything I'm doing because you see everybody around you and go, well, maybe I need to use this today or maybe I use it to do that. Just take what you need to the contest. If you got three sauces, <laughs> take those three sauces. That's yep. all you need is what you have practiced in the backyard. Yeah. Nothing else. Yeah. Lean and mean. Lean and mean. Yeah. So like the drone it. smokers fit into that, and uh, we're ready to unveil them. Hopefully, here pretty soon. When uh, I can't wait, dude. There is so many people asking me every single day. We're just as far as that cooker. You know, we're not ready to release a kit yet, but I know that. Uh, it's a fun cooker to cook on. It's definitely, there's a learning curve with learning running curve. that pit. You yep. know, I'll, I'll tell you, it's not a low and slow cooker, no. in my opinion, anyway. Have you tried other types of smokers? Have you, What have you used? Because we talked a little bit about uh, some of the other cookers you've used. Yes. Uh, the only probably smoker that I haven't used, I've never cooked on a gravity fed. Uh, we might have to change that. <laughs> I don't know. I think barbecue's moved into a different type of world than what it was. I remember back when everything started, and we talked about this, is that uh, I was cooking on a reverse flow uh, water cabinet mm-hmm. and frame. Verticals. Reverse yeah, vertical flow. reverse flow water smoker. Which one was it? I'm trying to remember. That was the the smoking gun. I yeah, actually yeah, had yeah, a hand yeah, in yeah, building yeah. that. That was yeah. through Nolan's yeah. Custom Smokers. Yeah, Nolan's. Uh, kind of like a backwoods. If you mm-hmm. if you've ever seen a backwoods, or kind of like, it was kind of like that. But it was it was a great smoker that I cooked on for a little while. Mm-hmm. But you know, I was at Cape. I think is when it yeah, was. Yeah, I remember it. Yeah. I was, why is Frank cooking on a trash can? I asked my brother that, and I was like, why is Frank cooking we on a trash can? We actually had Frank and Cube number one. Yeah, the very first one. That I was an ugly freaking pit. And I didn't understand. <laughs> that's back in the era kind of when kind of like cars, you know, like muscle cars. Everything had to be big and bad, and yeah. everything had to be. Everybody was cooking on rotisseries and gravity feds. And, and I had a folded up piece of 16 gauge that I had a exactly. charcoal basket. And, and I, I was like, <laughs> what is going on over here? <laughs> but nobody knew what they would turn into today. Yeah. You know, and it's become something that's nationalized right here in Missouri. There's a bunch become. of people that have kind of knocked it off. Yeah, you know, and uh, it's a different style. It's fun, man. That's that's the best part. Just you know, running stuff that nobody else ever thought of. You know, coming up with new things. And that that's was a, awesome. a learning curve for us. Mm-hmm. You know, people's like, well, you can just take it and go in. You can't just take it and go in. Like we talked about earlier, you have to learn the process of yeah. it. And cooking on a drum smoker is different than cooking on anything else. Mm-hmm. It's different flavor, different heat, different way to source your meat through the pro- process. Mm-hmm. And you have to learn that process, just like anything else. But I say it was a, a learning curve at first to where I feel like we're on top of it now to mm-hmm. even control the airflow or whatever you got to do. Because it's kind of like a big convection is really what mm-hmm. it is. It's constantly circulating in that one chamber. So I'm going to put you on the spot. You ready? Go ahead. So what, do you have any predetermined uh, uh, objections to a gravity feed? Do I have any predetermined? No. You I haven't don't. You haven't talked yourself into like, I just don't think it's going to work because no. dot, dot, dot. I think, I don't believe so. Not me. Uh, I just yeah. never cooked on one. Uh, I've actually been around some but i've never cooked yeah. on one at all cool yeah. so it's just something that's never been in the wheelhouse well i'm going to date ourselves here because i don't know when this podcast is actually coming out but uh we do have a mini uh kit that's coming very soon <laughs> we're going to throw down and build that thing and i cannot wait it's been ready it's been it. ready for production for a year and we haven't actually built one so i'm really excited about that so how often do you cook on your cookers Right now, I've been actually doing a lot more cooking than uh, that I had been in the past. Uh, and I can say this, uh, I took uh, Chris Schaefer's uh, heavy smoke class yeah. here this past winter. Mm-hmm. Uh, like I always said, we was always kind of fly by our pants and we kind of just, we would do it and we knew what was going on. Mm-hmm. But learning something from Chris that a lot of people don't pick up, and you won't hear a lot of people say this, is that I didn't learn uh, like probably like everybody else did from Chris, you know, Chris taught techniques and everything like that, but I didn't pick that up. I picked up was his drive. I picked up his drive that he wanted to be something Yeah. and to be something he was practicing every Sunday, Yeah. you know, and we got to some downtime to talk, but he was cooking every Sunday mm-hmm. to be a world champion, to be the guy that you say, Oh shit, he's here. Mm-hmm. I'm probably facing to lose this contest. Yeah. And if you want to be in that circle, 
you have to practice yep. and practice what you're going to do. Mm-hmm. Now, I think that put more of a perspective in it for me to say, if I want to be more, then I'm going to have to invest more into myself instead of what I think I can do yeah. and go in and say, this is what I'm going to do. Oh, yeah. Because confidence has the biggest uh, factor in anything. Mm-hmm. Uh, if I believe that I'm going to that contest and win, I'm probably fixing to win that contest. But if I'm doubting it going into the contest, I don't even need to be there. Yeah. There's no point of spending that money. You set yourself up. You're setting yourself up for failure. Mm-hmm. So if I know I'm going to walk across that room and I'm going to walk across that stage, it's a whole different ball game walking into that contest than it is when I'm just showing up to have fun with the boys mm-hmm. to play it off as I didn't do very well today. Yeah. So if mm-hmm. you want to win, then you need to practice. And yeah. that, there's a lot of, you know, people talking about where things are rigged or things are this or – you know, certain people are going to win because of the way the computer system. I don't believe that's true anymore. I don't. Now, at one point, I kind of thought that there was a good theory behind it, but I don't. I think if you want to win, you have to find that one spot. And when you find that one spot, you're going to start winning contests. Mm-hmm. And when you start winning contests, that's when you start getting noticed. Yep. Yeah, man. Okay, here we go. Last one. How long does the meat from a cook normally last you? <laughs> Not very long. Is that a loaded question? Uh, we talking about contest or we talking yeah. about practice? Uh, let's talk about contest first. Uh, contest, I usually give it away. Do you? Other than the brisket, it gets eaten. <laughs> Is that right? Yeah, yep. the brisket's pretty good. I can Brisket remember. always gets eaten or taken home. The pork or chicken always gets given away, yep. and uh, it never comes home or it goes right. in the trash can. I know that's hard to say when you're spending $30 on a side of ribs, <laughs> but after I just not selling it or anything like that, but brisket always seems to get eaten. Yeah. So uh, how about practice meat? Practice meat? Mm-hmm. If you want to be a top cook, then you probably need to cook what you are going to turn in. Mm-hmm. And honestly, me saying that, I'm not one of those guys because I'm just not. Once I find a timeline and once I find the spot where I want to be at, uh, find a meat that you can be consistent with. So if you're cooking IBP or Swift Field or whatever you can get local, Prairie Fresh, whatever, Swift, buy 10 of them, Mm -hmm. 10 butts, 10 sides of ribs. Cook those 10 until you find that point that you are looking for that you want to be at. Mm -hmm. Then once you find that point, transfer over to the expensive meat that you want to cook at a contest. Not saying you have to spend the money on an expensive piece of meat, mm-hmm. but if you want to turn in an expensive piece of meat at a contest, then you need to practice with it. Because yeah. you just don't need to show up at a contest with an expensive piece of meat and say, look, I bought the best meat and I'm going to win. Mm-hmm. And I understand that that's pretty much where barbecues went today is how how much can I spend to win. Mm-hmm. And back in the day, it wasn't like that. It was, no. hey, I'm going to a contest. I'm going to pick it up at the grocery store. Yep. I'm going to get the brisket at wherever it's at and I'm going to have it and we're going to cook it and the ribs and I don't think we spent maybe $200 in meat ever going to a contest mm-hmm. and that was only because we was cooking four butts because yeah. you're going to screw up something <laughs> but you know you cook a I brisket you know, you had $65 brisket yeah. maybe something like that and you cook yeah. your butts and your ribs and I cooked a, I turned in a lot of choice at, at the American Royal man I got our name called I mean it's it's you know we weren't in the we weren't in the top 10 but you're a team smoker builder a couple times up in oh, there. Yeah. <laughs> so. so now, I mean, but I think today, I think you have to spend that money. I really do. Yeah. I think you have to spend the money to buy the Wagyu or or the Duroc or even the the all-natural chicken. Do you think that the judges are preconditioned to what they're going to have? I think they do. The day they go in there? And they so know like the If you don't hit now. that, they can tell. I think they yeah. know the difference now. Yeah. It's not that you didn't cook that meat well. Mm-hmm. I think that they have been seasoned so much on what Wagyu tastes like against a prime to against all-natural chicken to a piece of chicken that's just store-bought. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I think we're paying almost two fifty three dollars for a thigh. You're paying $30 for a side of ribs. You're paying $50 for one butt. You're paying $200 for a, a brisket. I mean, it's expensive. It's become a money game. Yep. And I think that's hurt the world of barbecue more than it's helped it. And that's my personal opinion, so don't mm-hmm. run off with it. But that's my personal opinion to where... No, we're think, talking about the pro circuit, though. Exactly. Here. Yeah, we're not talking about the backyard, KCBS, exactly. backyard, that kind of stuff right now, I don't guess. You think the backyard circuit's probably more fun now? 
I, not if you go to Alabama. <laughs> they're down there ripping it up. <laughs> How are they? I heard down there in Alabama their backyard teams come in and whip up on the professional uh, Casey Best teams. But, I mean, what is professional anyway? Yeah, just define so. that. Do you win money? Yeah, at, at a backyard cook, contest? Yeah. I think the difference between they call it pro and backyard is I think they cook three meats instead of four. Yeah. Or something. I'm really not for sure. I don't know. Yeah. I've never had the backyard thing or whatever. It was either a sanctioned contest or an unsanctioned contest of what we've ever cooked. So, Mm-hmm. I really don't know about the whole backyard thing, but I think it's a great way to get involved with barbecue because if you're cooking expensive meat at a backyard contest, you just need to go ahead and move over to the pro side and yeah. come compete with the big boys. So Yeah, if you're already it. spending the money, get on out there and mix I look it at, up. Yeah, I look at it as a great way to get in, get involved, learn what's going on, learn mm-hmm. the processes, learn how to build boxes, what you need to turn because, I mean, that was our biggest downfall when we first started, and that's a whole different segment of, you know, mm-hmm. talk right there. Yeah, it is. Of how you turn <laughs> in, what you turn in, and stuff like that. But Yeah. Well, guys, I, I really am so glad that Johnny stopped by and we were able to do these podcasts here. Uh, this is the third one in our series. And, uh, Johnny, I love it when you come up here, man. You <laughs> need to come, come more often. <laughs> And uh, anyway, be watching the Pit Hustle 2.0 drums. See how them things fare up in this uh, professional competition barbecue circuit, hot and fast. Um, I'm excited to release the uh, the, the uh, kit. I want to see some people building them themselves and see what they do. I know my buddy Dave Fees from uh, Bluffs Barbecue up in Nebraska. He built one, used a Weber lid on it. I'm excited to see how it fares. <laughs> I seen that one. Other Did day. you? <laughs> so anyway, guys. Uh, If you haven't already, hit the subscribe button. We'd sure like to uh, keep you up to date on what's happening on the podcast here. And, uh, you know, uh, go out and see what you can do to contribute back to your people around you. Teach somebody how to cook. Teach somebody how to run a pit. You know, introduce them to this barbecue world. Till till next time, the Barbecue Secrets, or uh, used to be the Barbecue, Pitmaster Secrets Podcast. (laughs) We'll catch you on the flip side. 